As we're looking deeper into the city controller race for the city of Houston, we're getting closer and closer to the election. We're getting back with Bill Frazier, CPA, candidate for city controller in the city of Houston. Welcome back to Texas GOP Vote, Bill. Well, thank you, Bob. I appreciate you having me back. When we talked last time, we mentioned a little bit comparing Detroit and and uh, Houston's financial situation. Let's drill down into that a little bit now and talk about what's going on in the city in terms of its debt. Okay, how bad off are we in the city of Houston? Okay, well, we've got a modest amount or, or appropriate amount of bonded debt, which is debt supported by our tax dollars, about $2 billion in the general fund. Mm -hmm. And then there's other debt uh, related to the airports and the, and the, uh, the combined utility system, and those are supported by fees and, and stuff like that. So those, so those funds are doing pretty good, or those bonds are doing pretty good. The general fund also has some other debt that's not related to the tax the tax rolls, and that's primarily related to our pension funds. Mm -hmm. We have $600 million of pension obligation bonds that we issued in 2007, 2008, over a period of years, mm -hmm. $600 million that we then contributed to the pension funds. So now we owe, instead of owing the pension funds, we owe the bondholders. Well, that money was put into investment accounts right before the market crash. So we didn't get real good bang for our buck on that. And then over, over a number of period of, of years, some, some other years, we have failed to make uh, the annual contributions to our pension funds. And that totals a little bit over a billion dollars now. So we've got about a billion six in mm -hmm. debt related to our, to our pension obligations. Mm -hmm. Now, on your website, you have a couple of charts that address, right. address some of these things, and we'll show those to the readers while we're talking here. Okay. Tell us a little bit about those, those charts and what, what they reflect. Okay, well, the first chart is a comparison of the city of Houston and their change in net assets. The change in net assets every year is uh, something like in the private sector, your net income or net loss. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the extent that our revenues exceed expenses or vice versa. Well, for the last 10 years, Houston's expenses have always uh, exceeded their revenues for, mm -hmm. for 10 years going. The total over the last 10 years is $2.5 billion. That averages $250 million a year on a $2 billion budget. So it's pretty significant. The disturbing thing is is that it's it's a constant trend. Mm -hmm. we've, we've not had any periods of positive uh, changes in net assets have always, always been negative. The other chart that we have is a chart that shows the amount of the changes in unrestricted reserves. So if I get a question, somebody says, well, what's the Houston going to invest in? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we don't have any money to invest. It's all it's all taken somewhere else. So um, it's, it's a call on future tax dollars, and it shows the extent to which we funded current obligations by issuing debt or liabilities. So that, that's a very disturbing trend. And then the other chart is just a general economic chart that shows the change in population and inflation over a percentage change over the last 10 years and then what's happened to revenues and expenses. Our revenues have always exceeded the growth in population and inflation mm -hmm. and our expenses have for the most part exceeded those revenues like I just said for the past 10 years. So, so expenses are growing faster than revenues and revenues and, expen and expenses are growing faster than the rate of population and inflation. And then our debt is way off the charts. We, our debt has been growing year over year, 10% uh, or more. Now, in these charts, it, you're reflecting several different cities in here, and Houston seems to be one of the poorest performing right. in every single category there. That's, that's correct. Uh, Chicago uh, is, is the lead on, on both, both, uh, both charts and, and, the, and the negative. <laughs> And so we've re been reading a lot about Chicago recently. They're having a lot of problems with their pension systems as, as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Houston outpaces Detroit a little bit. Uh, again, Detroit's got less population. So in terms of gross dollars, uh, Houston's $2.5 billion is a little bit worse than Detroit. Uh, you've got Philadelphia. You've got uh, some other cities in there that are, that are in the negative. Most of the cities that I've studied across the country are either at break even or a little positive. And that's kind of where you want to be. You want to be able to manage your expenses according to what your revenue base is. You don't want to have too much, too many revenues. You don't want to have too many expenses. But Houston's always been negative. You mentioned earlier, or we talked about earlier, the Houston Chronicle had an, an article a couple of weeks back about the city not paying its vendors on time, which is a right. direct uh, function right. of the city controller's office. Right. Why would the city not pay its bills on time? Well, I've been asked by some contractors, 
you know, when I'm out interviewing with them and talking to them, they've asked me directly, are you going to be able to pay our bills on time? Because the current, they, evidently there's been some problems with the, with the current system. And, uh, you know, my statement is, I, I, I don't think it's a problem per se in the controller's office, although it could be, but I, I do believe that, according to the Houston Chronicle, they're, they're purposely slowing down payments to vendors because of lack of, lack of financial resources. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the money. Uh, so so that's, that's a little disheartening to know that, you know, when you don't pay your vendors on time or you stretch those payments out, that's just another form of borrowing. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a short-term, no-interest loan that puts, right. puts a lot of small business owners in jeopardy because right. they depend on that cash exactly. flow to pay their bills. Um, how, would, how could the city handle that differently? Well, they need to pay their vendors on time. I think, I think part of the reason that, uh, you know, if I were a vendor and I knew the city wasn't going to pay me, I'm either going to not bid as, as many times or I'm going to bid a little bit higher to cover the fact that I'm not going to get paid as, as fast. These contractors have subcontractors that need to, need to get paid too. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, to the extent that's happening where they're slowing payments down, I think, I think we need to stop that. I think we need to pay our vendors on time. Another form of borrowing you, I've heard you talk about is when we give tax abatements to companies that are going to come in, a new Walmart comes in or right. another new company comes in or something, we give them tax abatements. How is that borrowing? Well, uh, you think about this, if, you're, if you have a company that's going to come in and they want to do a development in a certain area, you're trying to entice them in, you say, well, if you'll do all the infrastructure, if you'll build the sidewalks and streets and the drainage and all that, mm -hmm. then we'll give you a tax abatement. Well, if you think about that, they're, they're spending the money, okay, and so that's, that's an obligation for the city to put in the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so they're spending the money up front and then you're going to pay them back later it's as if they, instead of abating the taxes, it's a, as if they paid you the taxes and then you turn around and pay them off for the money that they spent to build the infrastructure. Okay. Now the election's coming up pretty quick. Tell us about early voting. Yeah, uh, early voting on October 21st, mm -hmm. and that goes for two weeks, okay? And then, uh, and then November 5th is, Tuesday, November 5th is voting day. And if people want to find out more about you and your candidacy, where can they get more information? They can go to my website, FraserForController.com. That's F-R-A-Z-E-R for Controller.com. Okay. We want to definitely encourage all conservatives in Harris County that live in the city of Houston to get out and vote and to vote for Bill Frazier. I think you're going to make a tremendous impact in the, uh, in the city's financial future. I want to come back and talk to you one more time before the election okay. and uh, really drill down into this pension thing and, and talk about what the city's doing with that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks.